This is James Donaldson, and uh, if you want to support us, you can buy our Spy Series, link below. If you want to see what we're doing between videos, you're more than welcome to follow us on Instagram. Kind of see what, what's going on, what's new, what might be coming down the pipeline for videos, uh, other photo shoots, things like that. Um, we did get rid of our Patreon. Basically, we don't want to give uh, our hard-earned money, you know, a bunch of it back to the government. So, we basically decided that they could go... F James Donaldson here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the T-Rex Arms Ragnarok SD holsters. Alright, so gentlemen's disclosure, as I said, we're talking about the T-Rex Arms Ragnarok SD holsters. This video is a long time coming, um, just things kept changing, for instance, they, uh, I just, I kept trying different things, testing this out, uh, just because of a little bit of its versatility, um, and then also, they came out with a Gen 2, so when that happened, doing a video just on the Gen 1 was kind of irrelevant. So I had to get a Gen 2 and then I had to try it out. So um, thank you T-Rex for, uh, you know, improving your products. I say that like it's facetious. I really do appreciate that they uh, improve their products. So getting right into the meat and potatoes, um, ergonomics was a big thing, right? The draw. So pulling this pistol out, or pulling a pistol out of it, is it easy, smooth, etc.? It is. And of course, without being too easy. Now, replacing it, um, just about as easy, but at the end of the day, I think most people agree, putting a pistol back into its holster isn't as, as hot of an issue, uh, hot as a topic, hot of a topic, whatever you want to say. It's not as important. So, um, yeah, and it's easy enough. Now, a big deal to me when talking about holsters, especially ones that are holding a pistol with a potentially hot suppressor, is... What is, what is the holster like static? Um, holsters in general, what are they like without the gun? Do they flop around? Um, do they get caught on stuff or are they just there ready to accept your holster back? Um, that's how these are, of course, and no surprise there. And the big thing is when the pistol's on me, they, uh, now part of it is just the spacing and how I have them mount up with the Safari Land system, but they keep the, the suppressor plenty away from my leg. I don't have to worry about burning myself. That's not an issue whatsoever, melting my clothes into my skin, nothing like that. Um, it maintains good standoff, and and that's even without movement or anything like that, or even with movement. So running around, kneeling, things like that, no problems. So retention in general, uh, it's solid. You know, it's it's a T Rex Arms product. They're they're not going to put anything out that's shitty. They're just not going to do that. And if they do, they'll quickly recant it and fix it. So, uh, but they didn't need to. They I mean they spend years developing products before they put them out and. Uh, in, in the industry I work in, I, I work with some products that are very simple. So you'd think, oh, what a piece of Kydex, right? No, it, you can really put a lot of thought and engineering into a, a one-piece 
item, let alone a, a few piece item, and really perfect it. And we'll talk about kind of what they did to perfect it here shortly. So talking about weapon options, uh, really good variety of weapons that you can use. Basically, all the weapon has to have is the ability to have, take, an X300. So Surefire X300. They just stick out long enough. That's why you're probably, unless they do certain engineering, you're probably not going to see these holsters with, for a TLR1. And that's just it. Uh, so X300. Now what I really appreciate about both generations of holsters is that they'll accept an X300V, which I don't have in front of me, but it looks almost identical to the X300U. And what that means is it, it shoots IR light. So if you're shooting under night vision with your pistol, then that's something you can do. Now, something like my 17 here, it has an optic with a night vision mode. So um, as far as an aiming device, I, 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 and granted I did learn this by watching T-Rex Arms videos, is uh, it, a lot of pistol aiming lasers, uh, it's hard to keep them zeroed, especially on something with a polymer frame. So going with something that just is a source of IR light and then you passively aiming through your optic, that's, that seems to be a way to go. It, it gro grossly simplifies. And what I, of course I appreciate about that is that by doing that with an X300V, I can use the same holsters I'm using with my X300U and that I practice with all the time. Now I've gotten pretty good at passively aiming with a pistol and so not only is that all in theory or something I've seen on the internet, but at this point it's something I've done. So I can speak to the fact that I really, really appreciate the use or the ability to use an X300V. Now, of course, you can also use an X300T at this point, which is the turbo. Nothing to do with IR. Um, if you know what that is, great. If you don't, I don't know, Google it. I will say the one disappointing thing, and this is not on T-Rex arms because it's on H&K. H&K, why can the HK45C not take an X300? I mean, I know why, and I just... I know they're trying to make it shorter, I just, I would own that gun. Um, I don't care for 45. Uh, I own one right now, and that's because I inherited it, and I'll never get rid of it. I just don't have any use for 45. I would own HK45C if it could take an X300. <sighs> you let me down, HK. Let me down. Uh, so, something I was suspicious about, and that I... I even misspoke in my previous suppressed pistol holster video is I said they don't take long slides. I was wrong. They do. Um, basically I got this second one, was trying to figure out one I wanted to put it with and I decided, you know what? You mold these. So the way they come the way they come is these are straight up and down. You go on the website and you can see. And you take a hair dryer. I was going to use a heat gun because you can use a heat gun over a hair dryer. And I thought, you know what? I'm reviewing this for customers. So I should be able to say how easy it is with a hair dryer. Uh, don't buy a heat gun if you have access to a hair dryer. Borrow your mom's, whatever. Um, or your girlfriend's, or let's be real. You probably don't have a girlfriend if you're watching this video. It's a dog on me, not you. Anyway, um, and they bend right out. So because I was molding it, I kind of thought, I mean, if I fuck it up, I can re. Excuse me, if I mess it up. I can remold it, and uh, otherwise it'll work, right? And it did. So when I brought their version, bought their version two, I uh, went ahead and molded it to my 17L, and it works great. So for those of you who are wondering, it'll take your long slide. Now the only thing I didn't do was mold it to my Glock 40 just to see, but after using this, the dimensions aren't much different, and again, I'm molding it myself. I decided that uh, I'd be shocked if it didn't work. So I didn't deem that experiment necessary for this video. Plus it was already taken long enough to make this video. Let's talk mounting options. This is probably one of the most important things to me for any holster, especially one that um, is going to be used intermittently. So I use kind of two types of holsters. I either use the Safari Land, it's the 6.3, but it's whatever the most recent one that'll take you know, any Glock with an X300 on it, as long as it's not longer. I think I got the 34 length, so that way I could have a threaded 17 or whatever I want to do, put a 34 in it. The point is, is that I either use a, a true Safari Land holster, retention, all that, or I'm using suppressed pistol holsters, depending on the pistol I'm shooting. So, 
being able to either put this on a Safari Land uh, UBL belt loop or using the QLS system was huge. Fortunately, all but one, I say fortunately because I thought it would be less, all but one of these suppressed pistol holsters are able to go on the QLS system. So that's very, very nice and I appreciate that. And of course T-Rex Arms, is they're just going to do that because their goal is compatibility as a really smart business decision on their part. So caveats and variables. Let's talk. Um, there's a little paradoxical, cyclic paradox kind of thing going on. I can't use an Osprey in these holsters. And uh, again, that's not a bitch at T-Rex Arms. I know it seems, sounds like I'm going down on T-Rex Arms right now. I don't mean to, but what I'm saying is true. You can go look it up. You can research it. Um, as someone who's in an industry where customer service is important and engineering is important, that's why I'm saying these things. Um, I'll, if you want me to say something bad, I think sometimes their products are overpriced. You can get some of the stuff they're selling cheaper somewhere else, like an X300. I'm probably never going to buy one from them. That said, they will probably always have stock when others don't. Moving on, um, I can't use an Osprey in these, uh, mainly because an Osprey won't go on a Glock that is shorter than a 34 length because the Osprey is going to hit the X300. It won't go on all the way. Even then, um, the Osprey would be too low on the 17L to work with the holster. So while the 17L can have an X300 and the Osprey on it, Osprey hangs down too low and it's going to screw with this. So to my knowledge, you can't, you're going to have to have a different gun if you're going to use an Osprey with these. That said, look on their side. They're using stuff like USPs, things like that with Ospreys. Those work fine. Great. So, the Osprey being a weird can, um, I always have to kind of notate things about the Osprey with certain diff different products because it's its own animal and it requires specific things. And I don't want people to buy something and then realize it won't work their Osprey or do something like I did and end up with an Osprey and then realize it doesn't work with certain things. So, you're welcome. So obviously, like any suppressed pistol holster, they're RDS and uh, suppressor sight compatible. Uh, you could basically put a telescope on your gun and it's still going to holster. So that's nice. Um, primary con, so lacks versatility possessed by other holsters. So <clears throat> basically, uh, like the Hayden X300, which y'all run in, uh, we're uh, rolling some pictures of and and the armadillo concealment. I could throw any gun in those suppressed or unsuppressed as long as they take an X300. Um, I'm close with these, but the thing is, is so I got Glocks, right? So this one's for my 17 with the Gemtech GM5 on it, uh, a GM45. So I can slide this in with that. If I have a Glock 20 or a Glock 19 or da 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 da. da. The main dimensions are the light fitting on and then the width with the fatness of the suppressor the width of the suppressor so it doesn't matter if the suppressor sitting here or here or a glock 34 it's going to fit in there no problem so but if i start throwing in other guns like i don't know this isn't going to take an x300 but for the sake of illustration put a hkp30 in there it's going to fit different so i'll either have to remold the holster by another one whereas so one of the really big benefits of the hayden and the armadillo is that uh, if this is going to take an extra 100, then put it in the holster. That's awesome. Now, for duty use, these compared to that, uh, it, if you're a primary weapon guy, you got your primary weapon, you run it suppressed sometimes, you got an extra 300 on it, this is a great one. Uh, it's extremely stable. I haven't done a run test with these yet. I'm trying to figure out how to do that safely. But um, uh, you could definitely run in this. TRX's videos of them doing it in theirs. I just can't tell you if you can do it with the other ones. So, these are great holsters for that. If, if you're some kind of operator and you're going to, for whatever reason, suppress your pistol and carry it that way, these are a good option for that. They're not the only option. I think the other one I would use is the Cry Precision uh, gun clip. But outside of that, these are probably the go-tos for several reasons. The uh, durability, the stability, the QLS feature. Uh, the Armadillo doesn't QLS perfectly. And there was a little bit of engineering in there. Um, the Hayden does, but again, it just the Hayden doesn't clamp down on these the same. Um, which, again, I'm testing the Hayden still, so we'll see where I end up with that. Maybe I'll change my mind. But as of right now, 
you know, for, if you're, you know, you just got one gun or one gun you shoot most of the time and you're running it suppressed or you're not, whatever the deal, these are great for that. But if you're wanting a holster that's, you're going to be, just throw a pistol in all the time and do whatever, probably the Hayden of the Armadillo is the way you want to go. So the close. Uh, let's bring it in. I love the QLS compatibility. It's arguably one of my favorite features of the holsters, aside from the fact that you can holster a suppressed pistol in the first place. Um, the retention is just solid. The way you can feel these slide in, it just goes right in. I mean, it really, it's not coming out. These ears that index with the uh, front of the gun, they do a great job. Uh, I really like the added stability of those. Now the uh, draw and replace factor, it, it's outstanding. So, at the end of the day, these are definitely holsters you should consider if you're in the market for this type of thing. And if you have any questions, leave them below. I think that's all I got. This has been James Donaldson with The Contemporary Gentleman. Until next time, keep your composure.